So welcome back to FPV Reviews and today we're doing some endurance testing of the Gemini version 2 platform and we've also we're also testing a battery we've got a, a new battery that should provide uh, by the manufacturer specs uh, for the individual cells should provide a lot better energy density than the lithium batteries lithium polymer that we usually use in the hobby and so we're going to be testing that battery today too. The battery has uh, 64 amp hour or 64,000 milliamp hour capacity. Uh, the, the C rating for these batteries is low compared to LiPos. So I've done some torture testing on the battery already and verified that it can indeed put out plenty of power for the aircraft well within the manufacturer's specs. And that doesn't seem to be a problem. So the only test we have left to do is to verify that the battery really has the rated capacity that that it it should by the according to the manufacturer uh, it's a they're a reputable company so we'll see if that really proves true and we'll get to uh, test out you know part of the, some of the potential of the the Gemini version 2 airframe as well now we're flying several pounds below gross weight um, and we're not carrying a payload other than the standard FPV equipment for this flight. So in theory we could actually use a larger battery, quite a bit larger battery, and fly for even longer than we're going to do today. But what this uh, represents is a battery that allows a payload to be carried uh, simultaneously, uh, still staying within the gross weight of the aircraft. So this is a, a battery that could be useful for you know commercial uses or long duration FPV flights uh, where you'd want to put cameras or other sensors on the airplane. So let's send it up and uh, see how long it can stay up in the air. That's the, the goal today. We're going to only run the battery down to 9.6 volts. It's a nominal 11.1 .1 volt battery. So according to the manufacturer of the cells that should give about a 300 cycle battery life at the discharge rate that we're expecting. So the battery should last a long time. We're going to try to treat it good, uh, but it's a real world environment. So we're going to see what happens. for what are almost two hours now it's cold out I've got cold I'm kind of hungry <laughs> and uh, the dad's chair has failed and so a lot of things have happened while the airplane is still up in the air I've been logging the, the graph for the power curve for the, the battery which we'll uh, show you in, in a moment um, after the flight video, uh, and we're, we've also had some turbulence, and I think the temperatures dropped a bit out here, which can't help the performance of the battery any. Uh, and, you know, the turbulence can't really help the efficiency of the airplane at all, either. So we've had to raise the throttle a little bit to to uh, keep the airplane from descending. But other than that, it's going fine. <laughs> you know, a lot, of, a lot of things can happen in a, a multi-hour flight. And, uh, at some point, we'll talk more later about about all the little logistic things that you have to do uh, as well to to do a, a duration flight. For instance, powering the ground station and uh, you know, keeping you know the powering all the the ground. Probably do another segment on that later. But there's a lot of challenges involved with, uh, with this type of endurance flying. You know, were we to have a an autopilot, that would probably help the uh, the pilot workload, and free us up to say stay warm inside the car or whatnot. But uh, we don't have that right now, and uh, you know it's also important factor to be able to fly the airplane manually for a long period of time as well. 
so you're doing a search and rescue mission, you need to, you know, make split-second decisions on uh, what direction to turn the aircraft to position the sensor, why it's going to be important to have a, a relatively low pilot workload. And what we are demonstrating is that the aircraft is easy to fly. It represents a, a low workload for the pilot, the human pilot, for manual flying, uh, which is important. So and we're we're flying with the center of gravity fairly back. You know, it's not at the rearmost point, uh, but it, it does affect the directional stability of the aircraft just a little. But it's still extremely stable and flies hands off, no problem, even for you know, 20, 30 seconds, a minute at a time. It's, it's not really an issue. But what we are trying to do for this flight, we're, we are getting a lot of turbulence, so we're trying to correct for that before the aircraft does to try to improve the efficiency of the airplane a little bit, keep it in the area that we want to. We're doing that because we're testing a new battery pack. Keep the airplane in sight within wide distance of the runway. So that's what we're doing right now at about, about hour two, roughly. So we'll, we'll keep you posted and uh, wish us a happy landing. Well, we're just about to break the four hour barrier. Yeah, we're reading 9.62 volts. At 47 minutes, we'll be at, at a four hour flight here. Yeah. So this, that's awesome. That's a, that's a very good result. Another 15 seconds, Spike. Okay. Well, I think 10, 9, <laughs> 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Four hour flight. Okay, wow. We're okay, we just dropped voltage to nine point uh, nine point six. We're still up in the air. We're still up in the air. The airplane's at I don't know several hundred feet altitude. I'm going to gradually reduce the throttle here and set, I'm going to go ahead and set up a landing approach. Okay, we've broken the four hour barrier, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and bring her pull the throttle back. Throttles back all the way. And we try to set up a nice approach here. Oh, my fingers are shaking. I'm cold. I've got to keep it together here. I'm going to uh, undershoot the runway here because we may not be able to do a go around. Okay, so now what we're going to do, just after the flight now, we're going to check the, the voltage of each individual cell, all, th all three of the combined cells. So here's the first, the first set, 3.34, and we're going to move over one. 3.3435, and 3.34. So even after that, the battery still has a reserve, the cells are not down too far, and they're still in balance. So, we just wanted to check that, make sure we hadn't ruined the battery. But, um, boy, it's looking real good for this, uh, for this battery pack. 
and I think this is really going to change the way uh, the way our model airplanes get used for commercial applications, yeah. or just anybody that wants to fly for a really long time. This is the way to do it, uh, definitely. Uh, the combination of this airframe and and this battery pack is is awesome.